Hi everybody and welcome again to Basel 2 training program. We are still talking about operational risk and today we are going to cover the basic indicator approach. So what is the basic indicator approach? The basic indicator approach is a simple approach for calculating the capital charge for operational risk. It can be used by banks that are not internationally active as well as banks that are internationally active but may not as yet have a risk management system in a place for using the more advanced approaches for measuring operational risk. So we can say that basic indicator approach is available for all banks as a point of entry. The basic indicator approach components the operational risk capital charge under the basic indicator approach is based on two components. The first component is the exposure indicator, which is represented by the gross income of a bank as a whole. And the second component is the fixed factor, which is represented by alpha, set by the Basel Committee. The formula for calculating the capital charge for operational risk under the basic indicator approach is as follows. My dear, at this stage don't bother yourself with the complexity of this equation. You will see later on how simple and how easy we are going to use this calculation. And now let's look at the meaning of and the rationale of these two components. So let's first talk about the gross income of the bank. A gross income is a broad indicator that serves as a proxy for the exposure of the bank to operational risk. A gross income used in the calculation of capital charge for operational risk should be gross of any provision and the gross of operating expense. And what do we mean by these two conditions? A gross of any provision, for example, for unpaid interest. This is because such amount should have normally formed part of the bank income, but have been set aside for likely credit losses, so it should be included. And the gross of operating expense, uh, let's say we're, if we are talking about outsourcing, so outsourcing fees paid should be included because outsourcing of activity does not fully transfer operating risk to the service provider. And you should keep into your mind that only sustainable, renewable, and recurrent sources of income are to be used as the basis for calculating the operational risk capital charge. In other words, a gross income should exclude realized profits or losses from the sales of security classified as held to maturity and available for sale. Because the intention here is not for trading purposes and their sale does not represent sustain sustainable income from normal businesses. And the gross income should also exclude any extraordinary or irregular item as well as income derived from insurance claim. And now let's talk about alpha. What do we mean by alpha? Alpha is a fixed factor set by Basel Committee and it serves as a proxy and it shows the wide relationship between operational risk, loss, experience of a bank and the aggregate level of operational risk exposure as reflected in its gross income. My dear, I'm sure that you still remember this equation, which I showed you before. And see now how simply we are going to calculate the operational risk capital charge under basic indicator approach. First, we need to take the total positive gross income for three years the latest of three years. Next, we will add these positive gross income together. The result is as shown here as a 390. Next, we are going to divide the 390 
by three, which represent the three years. The result is 130. And then we are going to multiply this 130 into 15%, which reflect the alpha, which is set by Basel Committee. And the result in this case is 19.5. <coughs> And this is the operational risk capital charge requirement and their basic indicator approach. The treatment of negative gross income. My dear, if a bank incurs a negative gross income in any of the previous three years, will it be taken into account under the basic indicator approach? Absolutely not. Why? because the rule said that it should be a three-year average of positive gross income. So if the gross income for any of the previous three years is negative or zero, the figure for that year will be excluded from both the numerator and the denominator when calculating the capital charge. The negative gross income will not be added to the numerator and the denominator will exclude the year in which the income is negative. For more clarification, please look at the following example. We have a gross income for year number one, year two, and year three. Year one, the gross income is negative, which means that we are not going to take that figure into our calculation. And the same thing is going to be applied in the denominator we are going to exclude year one. So the equation going to take the gross income for year two and the gross income for year three only. The total provision for gross income will be 270. Then we are going to divide the 270 by two, which reflect the two positive gross income year. So the average of positive annual gross income for the last three years will be 135. And then we, will, we, and then we are going to multiply that figure by 15%, which represents alpha that's set by Basel II, and the operational risk capital charge requirement will be 20.25. The Years. As I always say that learning always can be fun, so try to have fun while you are learning.